Hi, this is Michelle Taberge, and as I do on my channel, I'm answering questions that I get in the comments that I think would be of general interest to a lot of viewers in a video, because I find that's the way people will see it. People don't read all the comments below the videos, so here goes. I got some great questions. So, <clears throat> got a question asking what's the difference between Golden's glazing medium or retarding medium and Liquitex's slow dry medium. So, um, glazing medium, Golden's or any other, has acrylic polymer emulsion. It has some retarding agent in it. Um, and it may have some kind of flow agent depending on the manufacturer. I'm not exactly sure, you know, about what each manufacturer puts in theirs, but that's a general idea of how they make a glazing medium because they want it to be leveling and they also usually they'll want it to dry a little more slowly so you have more time to work it and finesse edges and get it the way you like it. So that's a glazing medium. Retarding medium isn't a medium. Retarder is an additive, meaning there's no acrylic polymer emulsion in it, um, which goes back to my worst mistake um, acrylic painters make is adding too much of anything that underbinds the paint film or basically lowers the ratio of acrylic polymer in the paint film. I know that's getting a little technical, but just <laughs> read the bottle. They all tell you how much you can add in, and usually it's 25%. So a retarder, you can only add a small amount in. It doesn't improve the flow or the leveling. It simply retards water molecules from evaporating from the paint film, giving you more time to work with the paint, okay? So that's a retarder. Doesn't change any kind of working characteristics of the paint except drying time. So, uh, Liquitex makes a slow dry medium and that is different from a glazing medium. It does have some retarder in it for sure, but it has an agent that helps um, color to kind of glide into other colors. And it's something you would actually have to feel for yourself. It's very hard for me to find precise words to describe this but I found it feels quite different from a glazing medium. Glazing medium usually feels pretty much like a gloss medium when you brush it out, but a slow dry medium definitely gives this more gliding quality to the paint. It feels more like oil paint when I add it in. Um, and then second part of the question is, does the Liquitex slow dry medium keep the acrylics open longer than Golden's glazing medium? haven't tested the two so I can't tell you my best guess is that they're gonna be about comparable but no actually you know that's a great question um, I'm gonna take that back because usually one of the things I love about acrylics is I may have mentioned in previous videos that I used to be an oil painter I painted exclusively with oil paints for about 15 years and then I had to switch for health reasons over to acrylics. I could no longer work with solvents and I was a big fan of glazing. I loved to glaze and I would do a lot of glazing layers and I'd have to start new paintings almost every day because um, in oils, even if you use an alkyd medium, it can take up to two weeks for the layer to dry so that you can put the next layer on. So one of the advantages of glazing with acrylics is you can put the next layer on really quickly because a lot of people who glaze like to do multiple layers, build up multiple layers. So my experience is um, glazing medium does actually tend to dry more quickly than a slow dry medium. The reason I had to think about that is because I very rarely do blending. I teach about slow dry medium, but I don't use it much in my own work because I just have no need for it, not because I don't think it's a great thing um, to use if you do that kind of painting where you need to blend colors and you need more open time. I'm much more of a quick painter and I layer. So anyway, I had to think about that because I know we've done tests where I had people time how long um, it took to dry for the slow dry medium and we found that it would 
if I used it in a thick um, layer and mixed in 50% of the medium to 50% of the paint, in an hour, the thick layers were still completely wet and totally workable. You would not find that with a glazing medium. And I wouldn't want that in a glazing medium because I'd want to put another layer on. So, um, anyway, the rest of the question was maybe halfway between open acrylics and glazing medium. Now, Golden's open acrylics is another whole animal. I haven't experimented with them. I did get a set, again, because that's not the kind of painting I do. I just never sat down and worked with them. But what I understand about them, and you'll want to go on Golden's website to confirm all this, um, they also have a YouTube channel. Um, but is that they the acrylics stay open? I was going to say wide open, but basically open means wet and workable for 24 hours. If you add any mediums in that aren't open mediums, then they will act like a regular acrylic. But that's a really long time for acrylics. Um, a really extended drying time for a traditional acrylic film would be you know 20 to. 40 minutes without a medium and longer if you add retarders or slow dry mediums or so forth. So I hope I didn't confuse you further. I hope that helped. Um, leave me comments below if you need more clarification. I will copy it and address it in my next Q&A video. So uh, Prima from Canada asked me a question. I have done acrylic paintings but cannot get a glossy finish. How do I achieve a glossy rather than a dull matte finish? Um, so basically just adding gloss medium in and I created a video recently that talks about the difference between gloss medium and matte medium. The other thing is make sure you're not adding too much water. I find that um, especially with beginning painters who don't have any mediums yet and are just getting started with the paint itself that they're adding water just to change, you know, to make it more workable, to spread it out, to make it thinner and so forth. That's fine to do up to 30%, but please don't go beyond 30% unless you're working on an absorbent surface like paper or canvas without a gesso on it or something like that. So I hope that helps Prima. Try some gloss medium and tell us how you like it. I'd be really curious to hear how it works for you. Um, then, I wish I could pronounce this name. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna make a guess. It was Bjorn Tien. Um, looks like some kind of a Nordic name. Um, I apologize um, that I don't know how to pronounce your name, but thank you for your question. Um, um, it's been 15 or so years since I last did some painting. I will start painting some lemons on a dish. Nothing hard since I'm at a beginner's level. And I want to leave the canvas board white. The question was, after preparing the canvas board with gesso, should I paint the whole canvas, let's say the background here, in white, or is it safe to leave it in gesso and only paint the lemons? So I would say to that, um, let's talk about the difference between gesso and white paint. So many people have this question. I had this question for many years. So a gesso is a primer, and it comes from an Italian word, gesso. Um, I'm sure they pronounce it more beautifully than that, but it's, a, it's an Italian word. And it, the acrylic gesso is a modern version of a, a traditional, I won't get into all that, but anyway, acrylic gesso is acrylic polymer emulsion. It's got some titanium white pigment if it's a white gesso, and it has calcium carbonate or chalk in it. The calcium carbonate, the presence of that is to create a little bit of absorbency so that the first layers really kind of bond well. Um, it's good for drawing. It's, um, it, it can have a little bit of a tooth to it, which also can be nice, especially if you paint thick and you need something to sort of pull the brush strokes off of the brush. I mean, the, you know, the paint off of the brush. So, um, so yeah, so we start with a gesso because it's not quite as sealed and slippery. That said, I don't know if that's a good, description for paint sealed and slippery and that just popped out of my head but if you paint it with acrylics you know the difference that I'm talking about so in fact it would probably be good since you're not as familiar with these materials it's been a long time since you painted is to take a little scrap of a little tiny canvas board and paint one with a white paint 
and one with just the gesso and compare them. The reason I wouldn't necessarily recommend not covering it with white paint, there's nothing technically wrong with it. However, it is a little duller and because of the chalk, it's a little absorbent. So it definitely takes on um, dirt and dust more readily. Um, that may not be an issue if no one's going to be touching your painting, <laughs> the surface of your painting. Um, and if you, as you ask later in, in your next question or next part of this question is about varnishing. So I'm not giving you a hard and fast answer on that. Um, first of all, because I, I believe in um, the artist learning as much as they can and then making informed decisions. I just don't teach with like, this is the way it's done. I don't believe in that. And I've studied painting for so long. And um, I think one of the exciting things about contemporary painting is that painters are pushing the boundaries of the medium and changing what the paint can do and what is painting. And I think um, if we ham ourselves in with a lot of rules, we may inhibit um, creativity in some way. So I would just look at it. I mean, I'm getting, make a little aside here, I have um, a painter I know here in the Bay Area who does multiple coats of clear gesso to create, on Belgian linen, to create just a certain type of surface. And he's very intentional about it. It's not one coat, it's not two coats, it's usually three or more coats. One coat looks different than two coats. So these are the kind of subtleties that you get into with painting. So I would just be mindful, just pay attention, try things out, sit with them, look with them. But technically, there's nothing really wrong about it. Just be aware that gesso can take on more dirt and it is more, more porous, a little more absorbent than a white paint. So. If it's just a straight up traditional painting, then I can give you a quick answer. Yes, please use white paint, but you may for some reason prefer the gesso. So try them both. Um, then the rest of your question is, after drying, finish the painting with varnish. The same goes for a painting when you'd like to make the canvas completely black and paint the object over it. I haven't tried black gesso yet. So um, yes, varnish your painting. I do have a little YouTube playlist on varnishing and I will link it to this video so you can check that out. I talk um, extensively about varnishing and why it's important to varnish an acrylic painting. And then to your question, black gesso, same thing. It's just a little more absorbent. It has a little more matte, dull surface. So um, again, if you can get, you know, some black paint and some black gesso and paint them side by side, I'm mean, just, I'm a big fan see if I have any hand no I don't have any like that I could grab right now but just having little um, canvas boards about this size around your studio and do tests and mark on the back with a marker and you know or a pencil just note really clearly when you did it what you did why you did it so that you can learn from these things these questions so thanks for listening everyone happy painting i really hope this helped you out and keep sending the questions it's so fun for me to answer them